today's video, we're going to focus on the return of serve. To my mind, one of the most under-trained shots in tennis, because sometimes you don't have a partner who can serve to you. In lessons, a lot of times we're focusing on just the serve, but not necessarily the return. So we'll focus on the return today. My name is Micah Babel. I'm a former top 30 WTA pro, 19 times Grand Slam competitor, and we'll start right now. So number one, where do I stand when I return? So to my mind, unless you heavily favor one shot, you want to be in the position that allows you to get to each side in roughly the same number of steps. So to me, that's roughly about a racket length off the sideline. Right? So that's a good position. And also roughly, rule of thumb, one racket length off the baseline. Unless you already know the player, if they have a bomb serve, we'll get to that later, you can adjust to that. But what you do want to do, really, the focus is on your footwork. When you're in your ready position, I'm actually in a continental grip because I have a one-hander and my left hand is on the throat of the racket. So my ready position is here. Now, there's a lot of players these days that have their forehand grip and have a two-handed backhand, and they're already in their um, backhand grip, basically with the top hand. So when the ball then comes to their backhand, they're switching their bottom hand into a continental grip, or they actually keep it in an eastern forehand grip. So to my mind, those are things that are individual. Um, I don't necessarily teach them as much unless somebody really has issues. So either in your continental grip, hand on the throat, or you're already in your forehand grip, again, could also be hand on the throat, or you're sliding down if you have a two-hander, because that makes it a lot easier to just then turn either way. So let's look specifically at the footwork. In terms of footwork, I want to start moving forward when my opponent starts the motion and is about to release the ball. That's when I'm starting to move forward. I want to be on top of my split step, at the highest point of my split step, as they're making contact. Because as I'm up in the air, my, my brain literally is computing where the ball is going to go. And as I come down, I'm starting to move. So let's give that a whirl. So I'm moving forward and split. Moving forward, split. Good. Let's just work on that a couple of times. So I'm just going to let Faisal serve so I can work on the timing of my movement. And I'm not even returning. Split. Split. So I'm moving forward and split. That's all I'm working on right now. Moving forward, split step. And then I can go to my shot. So one more time, split, and then I return. So now the next step is that I'm trying to get my outside leg behind the ball. So if it's going to my backhand, I want to get my outside leg, my left leg behind the ball so that I can stride in, ideally if I can move forward. If I'm being pulled to the side, then I'm trying to really get to the ball in a diagonal way. So think about you being on top of a Christmas tree. You're the top ornament and you're going down the branches. That was one of the ways uh, that my dad taught me how to return. So I'm moving forward, I split, and now I have my outside leg behind the ball and I can drive in. Split and I hit that a little too late, a little too high. So I need to move up more to catch that in my proper contact zone. So let's do it one more time. Moving forward, split. I can still work on my footwork even when the ball is out. All right, so I got my back foot, my outside leg behind the ball. and I can move in. All right, and the same is true on the forehand side. Split. See, on that ball, I had to adjust a little bit to get to my forehand, but it's the same thing. I want to get my outside leg, this time my right foot, behind the ball. And that gives me a good forward momentum. So again, I always want to move forward. Split. 
And on that ball, you saw that I had to take a couple of adjustment steps because it was slow enough. I had time. Now, what do I do when somebody bombs the serves? So let's look at the same footwork pattern from the side. Again, backhand serves first. So I'm in my ready position. I'm moving forward, split, and I get my outside leg behind the ball. Split, get behind it, and then I can step in. So that's what I always try to do. I'm using my body weight rather than just my arm to not only counter his pace, but also start the point out in a very aggressive position. So one more time. So how do you adjust when somebody is hitting first serve bombs? There's a couple of things that you can do. All right, so one thing was the rule of thumb about a racket length. That's what I like to start off with. And then I adjust backwards. But you see the one problem with that, if I'm just moving back, I'm leaving angles open a lot more. So at the same time as I'm moving back, I have to adjust out a little bit more. And it's still leaving me vulnerable for um, angles. So what I'm trying to accomplish by moving back is that I just give myself more time. So let's give it a whirl. All right, so the next thing is when I'm seeing that my bigger wind up is not working, I have to shorten my take back and I already tried to do that. Ooh. Okay, I got away with that even though I had a pretty big wind up and that is the next thing that you can manipulate. When you don't have time anymore to have that big wind up on forehand or backhand, what you're working on is just shortening your take back. So either you do both of those things, you move further back, you still want to move forward with the same timing that you worked on before, and you shorten up the take back, or you start out a little closer and shorten your take back. So that's something that you have to work on with a little bit. Uh, one little thing, when you do have a partner who serves with you, do return all balls. Anything that flies in is yellow, even if it's a yard out, go and get that ball because it's an opportunity for you to work on a slightly uncomfortable return. So I'll try to stay back and shorten up my take back. And then I'm also going to move forward again and only shorten up my take back. And I want to experiment a little bit what helps me better to A, control the ball, and then most importantly, also gain a better second ball position so that I'm not totally in the fence. And so now I'm just going to hug the baseline a little bit more. If I can still control it with a shorter take back, then that is my preferred position. Okay, you got me on that one. It's not going to happen again, Faisal. But that's a valuable ball for me to play. Even if it's out, I have to shorten my take back and still sit low against it. So don't let him go. Hit him. A little too far away. All right, so go out and practice your return of serves. Get a friend, get a partner out there. Even if you practice with a so-called weaker partner, what you can do is just have that person slide in to just serve from way closer to the net. And as I said before, just take every single ball because that just makes you all the more prepared for anything that comes. So again, if you like this video, please let me know in the comments. 
subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you soon here on this channel.